Good morning and welcome uh, to my home. Um, today is the Feast of the Holy Guardian Angels. The word angel literally means messenger and it demonstrates God's radical commitment to communicating with us. And so I thought I'd take an aspect of the liturgy of the word and explain it so as to help us in our response to God's message. Prior to the proclamation of the gospel text, the deacon or the priest says quietly, Cleanse my heart and my lips, Almighty God, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. This is in the sacramentary. Because it is said quietly, some do not know about it. This is an important aspect of the liturgy and harks back to uh, God cleansing the unclean lips of Isaiah with the burning coal. That's in the sixth chapter of Isaiah. The translation softens the action of God to some extent, but the original refers to striking the mouth with a hot coal. This was certainly no gentle caress. We see the same in the call of Jeremiah, where the Lord struck the mouth of the young prophet and, according to the original, personally delivered divine speech into Jeremiah's mouth. That's in the first chapter of Jeremiah, um, verse 9. To guarantee that God is with his prophet, in the next verse, Jeremiah is appointed to do six actions and throughout the rest of the book, these actions are always the actions of God. Now it's nice to know how, what the words said by the proclaimer of the gospel mean. But what of the hearers of the gospel? In a recent Friday reflection, I quoted St. Paul who said, If I do not preach the gospel, I should perish. Our response ought to be, if I do not listen to the gospel, I should perish. Let me give an example from the Bible. We are aware of the action of Peter when Judas and the soldiers came to arrest Jesus in Gethsemane. He injured Malchus, the high priest's servant, by cutting off his right earlobe. And Jesus healed him. But why the right ear? The famed scripture scholar Raymond Brown gives the answer from biblical culture. The right ear was to listen to the spirit of the law, while the left was to listen to the letter of the law. Now, once again, it's nice to know all this, but how does it apply to us? Firstly, am I a person of unclean lips? Well, what can make a person's lips unclean? Is it only indecent language that make our lips unclean? A close reading of both the Old Testament and the New Testament shows a robust use of language. The prophets certainly show no trace of a grammar school education. Paul was downright direct and though skilled in rhetoric and Greek philosophy, he never substituted honesty with nicety. And so we need to look further than impolite language to see what makes the lips unclean. What about lies and gossip? What about words deliberately chosen and used to mislead or manipulate people? And lastly, what about words spoken in an unkind, hurtful and condescending way? Secondly, how do I listen? Attentively or with disinterest and indifference? Do I listen to the letter of the law or do I listen in a way which can bring about conversion in the Hebrew culture? in which the scriptures are steeped. Body pairs were a common feature. The hands and the feet went together, the eyes and the heart were paired, and the ears and the mouth went together. If someone's ears were healed, that person's mouth was also healed, enabling the person to hear the word of God and to speak it. And to speak God's word is to be God's messenger. Let us pray. Open our ears, O Lord, and cleanse our hearts and our lips, that we may worthily receive, proclaim, and live out your holy gospel. 
We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you, your homes and your families, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Remain in the peace of Christ and enjoy the protection of the guardian angels. God bless you.